violent murder of a young woman while she was closing up at her job. Plus, Denver's airport wants to expand its baggage system. The huge price tag, though, as city council mm. debates approving the funds. All right, let's take a look outside. It's a warm start to the work week. Should stay pretty dry this week as we look ahead to the unofficial end of summer. Lisa, it is. Yeah, yeah. That Pools was, closing it. down after <laughs> this coming weekend, Labor Day weekend. Yeah, you look at all the cameras, though. Across the state, we're looking at sunshine. Beautiful start to our Monday morning. It's going to be a nice end to, I guess, the unofficial end of summer. We're looking at low to mid 80s between about 1 and 2 o'clock. Today, you're going to hit highs right around 85 to near 90. So it's a warm start to the week. We're going to see a lot of sunshine this afternoon. 70s in the foothills and mountains. Evergreen 76. Grand Lake 72. 10 day forecast is warmer than average. We're going to be under a pretty big bubble of warm weather here with a nice ridge of high pressure here uh, building in over the western US. And so coming up, I'll show you just how the, that warm that means for our super seven day forecast and your full Labor Day weekend uh, forecast on the super seven day. Yeah, a lot of people are going to be doing their last minute uh, enjoyment of the pools as they stay open through the weekend. Right now we have a big problem down on the south side of town that is just clearing out the wreck northbound 25 at 225. As you can see from just a moment ago, all all lanes are now opening as they're pulling away, opening up that left and left center lane. So all lanes are now open on that northbound side, which is going to help us out tremendously. But the drive times right now are still at about 30 minutes, but it's going to take some time before all that traffic starts to ease up and then head up towards downtown Denver. So expect that pocket of slow and go traffic to remain. Had an earlier car fire on I-70 over near Pena. That's why it's just a little pocket of slowing for us out that way and still pretty heavy for us up to the north side. That earlier crash right by Thornton Elementary School still being cleaned up as well here just a little bit east of Washington. Well, this was the scene from Florida earlier this morning with uh, the launch ready to go. The Colorado designed and built Orion spacecraft almost hmm. lifted off, but due to ongoing engine issues on the SLS rocket, the first phase of the Artemis missions had to be scrubbed just after 630 uh, this morning. Our time that was right when the launch window opened. So the next launch is scheduled for Friday just before 11 a.m. If engineers can fix that fuel leak as we anticipate the return to mm -hmm. the moon for the first time in more than 50 years, there are a few steps that need to happen before we get there. Yeah, and Denver 7's Jessica Crawford is live now uh, breaking down what will happen. We know eventually Artemis will get off the ground and what we're looking forward to next. Yeah, there's really a lot to look forward to pretty much everything <laughs> since this last thing was scrapped. We were prepared to see a launch today, but NASA is now planning to launch its most powerful oh, rocket yet on Friday. Artemis 1 won't have any people aboard, but the mission is still high stakes. That's because if it's successful, we could be one step closer to sending humans to the moon again. For now, all eyes are on Artemis 1 for a successful flight come Friday. This first mission will take 42 days to complete before splash down back here on Earth. And if all goes well in this test flight come 2025, we're going to be on the moon to stay. NASA's goal is to establish a permanent station orbiting the moon called Gateway. From there, astronauts could land on the moon, but it would also be a base for manned space travel to Mars and beyond. Standing 36 stories high and packing 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust, the space launch system will send the Orion space capsule racing towards the moon. Crews are already training for this. Artemis 2 will send the first woman and person of color to the moon. This mission being successful is a, a sign to the world and to the American people that, that we've been doing our best with, with your resources. And, and, and so thank you. We owe them that. And the next launch opportunity available for the Artemis 1 mission is on Friday at 1048 our time. But a launch attempt on Friday would depend on the outcome of troubleshooting on that engine bleed issue that caused officials to scrub today's yeah. countdown. All right, hopefully it goes uh, smoothly on Friday. Yes. Thank you, Jessica. Lockheed Martin here in Colorado played a huge role in the Artemis mission. It made the Orion capsule that sits on top of the rocket. The Denver Business Journal reports one of the many systems tested will be the Callisto voice controls and video conferencing. The aerospace company teamed up with Amazon and Cisco to create it using a modified version of Alexa, essentially. The teams also adapted Cisco's WebEx meeting platform to run on the tablet that's inside the capsule and use NASA's deep space network to send and receive the information. So the voice control system is called Callisto after the favorite companion of the Greek goddess Artemis. 
when you think about space, you probably think about Florida or Houston uh, space centers first, but Colorado has the nation's second largest aerospace economy in the country. As you take a look at the numbers, more than 34,000 people are employed by a Colorado aerospace company. The coalition's company directory includes more than 500 aerospace companies here. Nine of the nation's top aerospace contractors have significant operations here. And Colorado's aerospace companies develop products and systems for commercial, military and government space applications. Well, we have new developments after an unthinkable tragedy over the weekend. Friends and family in Greeley are now planning a memorial for 22 year old Angie Vega. She was killed Friday night while closing up at work. We've seen uh, makeshift memorials growing throughout Greeley, including where her body was found on Friday night. Denver 7's Veronica Costa joins us in Veronica. There are now plans for a celebration of life tonight. There are Angie's family and friends. They actually plan on getting together tonight right outside of where Angie worked to hold this memorial to really remember her. And this is the first time that a lot of them are going to be able to see just how many how much love rather has poured in from the community. They're going to see those flowers, the candles, the notes that people have written in Angie's honor. And we actually got the opportunity to speak with the owner of the salon that sits right next to the place where Angie worked. She told us she couldn't even stomach what had happened. I have so much anger because I am a female, I am a mother, I am a daughter, I am a niece. It's just like, you know, she's a niece, she's a daughter. She's never gonna have kids, she's never gonna get married. And that's not fair. Police say Angie was working at the NoCo Nutrition on Friday night when she had to actually close the shop, but they say they were called to the store just before eight and were told the employee there was missing and that it looked like the business had been broken into. When they arrived, officers saw blood in the store and Angie's car was missing as well. A few hours later, that car was found near 71st and 20th and not far from the store. It had Angie's body inside as well. Now, 24 year old Marcos Vallejos, who's being held on first degree murder and sexual assault charges. That's who police believe committed this crime. And as far as Angie's memorial goes, we know that's going to be outside of where she worked. That no co nutrition between six and eight tonight. Anyone who wants to help remember Angie is being asked to go and and welcome her family and really spend some time there remembering the 22 year old. We're live in Denver this morning. I'm Veronica yeah. Costa. Seven. All right, so sad, Veronica. Thank you. And uh, police across Denver and Aurora were dealing with violence this weekend, responding to five different shootings. Two people were killed and eight others were injured in these incidents. Right now, no arrests have been made yet. Also, we are talking to the family of a man killed in mm. Denver Sunnyside neighborhood. There was a vigil last night to remember Tomas Jimenez. He was one of four people shot outside what neighbors say was a house party. Happened near West 42nd Avenue and North Clay Street just before 1.30 Sunday morning. His sister believes that party got out of control and when neighbors went to call 911, they reported hearing gunshots. Tomas, a woman and two kids were shot. Something needs to happen with the gun laws. Too many, too many men and young kids are dying and it's the young kids that are having access to these guns. He wasn't, he wasn't a boy. He wasn't a 20 years old. He was a 41 year old man who was living his life in, in his home, you know, doing what he thought was right to come out here. So if you know anything about what happened early Sunday morning, give Denver police or Metro Denver Crime Stoppers a call. Well, DIA wants to expand its baggage system at a cost of half a billion dollars. The Denver Post reports the airport also wants to move forward on five other projects. Three of those would be paid for by federal grants, but the airport hasn't been approved for the funding yet. So it wants Denver's city council to approve about $200 million for those three projects, just in case it doesn't get the federal money. DIA was already awarded $60 million for another baggage system project. That money came from the FAA. It has also secured money for two additional baggage baggage related projects. The city council will vote on the funding next month. Up next, why Colorado's Secretary of State is sounding the alarm over national elections. The impact, she says, they could have on voting rights. And leading the campus amid a pandemic, how the last few years have taken a total, taken a toll that is on front range principles. The pressure's there every day. You feel it.